Well, hi everyone, it's good to be back with you and back with Jeff Cranford. And it's good to have changed the image behind us. Yeah, I like the, I like this image a little bit better. And number one player in the world, Stacy Lewis, back here, making one of the swings that uh, probably took her to victory somewhere. So Not a bad move. A little easier to, Not a bad easier move. to look at. Absolutely. And also brings up something interesting because when we finished last time, we were talking about perfection, as we're called to it, being something of a process. And you alluded to a passage in Ephesians 5 that many people uh, will go to in looking at the idea of perfection. And it's very similar to what we do with professional golfers. A lot of times we will pattern our swing. Absolutely. Uh, or at least pieces of our swing. Um, I remember growing up around the game, uh, looking at guys at the end of the range who I knew had a really nice, mm. nice swing, not for their swing so much as their tempo, just trying to get their right, tempo in my right, head. Right. So we will pattern ourselves after great players like a Stacy Lewis and go forward from there. Now give me that Ephesians 5 Well, passage. before I do, think mm -hmm. about CyberVision. You know, CyberVision oh, was yeah. very big a number of years back. In fact, uh, Al Guyberger, Mr. Yeah. 59, his son, uh, Al Jr., uh, I play some golf with, is a member of the club that I belong to. And so what they did is they got these uh, little DVD sets. I think at the time they were actually cassettes. That's how long <laughs> ago it was, or eight tracks. VHS, I don't know what that VHS, VHS, yeah. VHS yeah. yeah, not audio, video. and. Uh, and you would just watch him swing over and over and over and over to try to pattern and imitate. And somehow that would go into the subconscious and it would be part of, and hopefully it would work out and they had their scientific data. And I don't know how, I don't know how uh, reasonable that was or how effective that was, but it was certainly a big thing, you know, 15, 20 years ago was the cyber vision. Uh, I used it so, and I found it very effective, again, for tempo particularly. Absolutely, absolutely. So I think the an analog here is simple, Ephesians 5.1, uh, Paul is talking here to the church at Ephesus, and he's saying, be imitators of God. Be imitators of God. Now, what we have to do is, and this is a kind of a difficult part of this, because how do you imitate God? I mean, God is omnipresent, he's omniscient, he's, he's everywhere. I mean, what is God? And we use some fancy word here called anthropomorphism, meaning we apply human characteristics to God just to try to describe him. But, I mean, we don't know what we're dealing with. Absolutely. I mean, this is an incredible, incredible power. So how do we imitate this power, this who is the Father? We have, no, Jesus said, even said, no one's seen the Father except for me. But then Jesus says something very powerful. He says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So it's not inappropriate to say, if we're gonna be imitators of God, well, how would we do that? We would be imitators of Jesus. And in what ways would be would we be imitators of Jesus? Would we okay? Well, now I've got to wear sandals and and go back and just walk and not ride a car. Yeah. I mean, what are we going to do to be imitators of Jesus? It's kind of like wearing our Ricky Fowler gear because Ricky wears Absolutely. it. That only goes so that far. That only goes so far. What do you think Paul was referring to when he was talking about to be imitators? Now we know that Jesus was the unblemished Lamb. He was perfection. He was perfection. So. How do we imitate the life of Jesus? Mm -hmm. So something that came up briefly in, uh, the other day in one of our Lynx fellowships is one of our guys, a precious guy said, well, if I have 20 pair of shoes, should I have 10 pair of shoes? And if it's 10 pair of shoes, mm -hmm. should I have five pair of shoes? You know, can I live on five pair of shoes? I said, that's the wrong, you're asking the wrong question. It depends on your calling, it depends on where you are, but to be imitators of Christ is not to do exactly as Christ did in the sense that you walked instead of drive a car or you wore sandals instead of, no, it's not that. It's talking about what parts of Jesus' life do we look to imitate? That's the question. And then that answers all the other questions. Mm -hmm. And so maybe we can look at that in a future video. Well, we can because I think uh, now we're, we're actually pushing toward Trinitarian theology without even trying to get toward Trinitarian theology, right. but we're talking about using Christ to be perfect as the Father is perfect. Yes. And we know that none of that can be done, and let's talk about this a little bit next time, without the Holy Spirit in us. It's only works with the Holy Spirit. And that's why it was better that Jesus go away. Why? Because the Holy Spirit can be with all of us all the time, at all time, 24 seven. Whether you're on a mountain peak or whether you're in the lowest of valleys, we have our teacher there with us. Yeah, great. Perfecting well, we'll us. About. Yeah, perfecting us, yeah. not us trying to get there That's ourselves. Right. Well, thank you and we'll be with you again next week.